going to present a paper on the work of Irish performance artist uh, Kira O'Reilly. And my paper explores the resonances between the Lewis and Vatorian theory of becoming other and a series of body limitations taking place in O'Reilly's life piece in the wrong placeness. In the wrong, in the wrong placeness stands for scientific experimentation in a laboratory environment where O'Reilly explored the possibilities of biotechnology to recreate life in an alternative way by creating a living lace out of our own, own skin cells alongside pig's issue, pig's tissue in semiotic laboratories in the University of Western Australia. As a response to her biotechnological experimentation in an animal research facility, O'Reilly performed a naked and tender dance with the carcass of a pig in a gallery space during which disconcerting shape-shiftings, boundary crossings, and emergencies occurred between the human and the dead pig. Preoccupied with es es establishing intimate encounters and close visceral bonds with the pig, the piece is strongly reflective of the biotechnological research O'Reilly conducted in the lab. Uh, as a biotech-induced corporal event, O'Reilly's piece critically interrogates the distinctions between self and other, man and animal, art and science, and raises crucial questions regarding boundary crossings and interspecies interactions, as well as ontological limitations. Yet a great deal of the secondary literature on O'Reilly's performance approach these questions through spatial, representational, and predicate terms. Recalling the issue of reductive and static interpretations of subjectivity via, I'm quoting, process of naming that tends to confer a stabilized being, unquote, a problem that dominates the performance art criticism, according to Susan Melrose, the scholarship analyzes these temporary and entanglements of the human and the pig in Riley's performance predominantly via specialized metaphors and framing devices such as half human, half animal entity, center like creature, or hybrid identity. Yet such kind of discursive constructs with their emphasis on the pre preconceived idea of outcome and renewed identity designations, I suggest fail to, fail to fully specify the dynamic and duration unfolding of the bodily amalgamations in Riley's performative piece. These prefigured and positional paradigms, while undeniably helpful for rendering the effects of transformation in more graspable terms, steer the temporal process of body metamorphosis in O'Reilly's work all too quickly back onto the categories of identity and representation. This overarching emphasis on the tangible outcomes or newly defined subject positions not only underestimates the processual processual value of exchange between the human and the pig, but also risks reducing the body from the very beginning to a final product of change. Citing Brian Masumi in such a kind of in such kind of commentaries, the, the very notion of movement as qualitative transformation is lacking. There is displacement but no transformation. It is as if the body simply leaps from one definition to the next. Unquote. In my paper, I look at how one might re rehabilitate O'Reilly's practice from the determined assumptions of bodily change by turning towards the and Dottery's processual and relational ontology of becoming. Rather than the spatial and end-oriented results and oriented models, I argue in favor of approaching the transitional intervalic and in-between modes of being opened up between the blurring of human and animal states in her life piece through the notion of becoming other in its eternal vocabularies, so as to access a non-representational, non-teleological, and non-identitarian non ways of thinking about those notations. The choreography of the, in the, in the wrong placeness, which explicitly deals with the idea of human and animal affinity, illustrates a highly disturbing aesthetic regime in which different species, the naked O'Reilly and the dead pig, are put into contact with each other through an intimate, embodied interaction. The intimate interspecies contact in O'Reilly's performance is rooted in the artist's own experience in the lab, her desire to fuse with the animal through the bio-scientific bio experimentation. In, in relation to her experience in the lab, O'Reilly writes, I'm quoting, using the pig as dummy, stand-in, double, twin, other self, doll, imaginary self, making fiercely tender and ferocious identifications with the pig, imaginings of mergence with the pig, co-cultured selves." Unquote. These imaginings of mergence with the pig through the act of bioengineering, in turn, translate into this extreme corporate
Riddle Dance, during which O'Reilly mobilizes a durational flow and precarious closeness between her embodied self and the carcass of the pig. Throughout the performance, she engages in tactile acts such as touching, cradling, stro stroking, carrying, and dancing with the dead body of the pig, Re realigning again and again in relation to her own naked flesh. Through this continuous alignment and fleeting engagements between their corporeal surfaces, the boundaries between the human and non-human becomes shifting, continually moving and extending into each other, bringing about an experiential and relational embodied landscape that performs their temporal alterations. Amidst this performative scene of corporeal connectedness and interchange, one can no longer perceive the distinct figures of properly defined body contours, only a progressive intermixture of human and non-human components that draws attention to their embodied capacities to affect and be affected. From this perspective, the logical becoming other begins to display itself as a critical quality of this uncanny aesthetics of O'Reilly's piece, with all the emerging corporeal proximities, processual interactions, and alternating states between human self and its animal other. This shape-shifting relatedness achieved during the performance, in turn, necessitates the, the stabilization of stable species boundaries on fixed ordering of bodies according to binary categories of, such as self, other, man, animal, inside and outside. Upon completion of her performance, O'Reilly further stated that the work left her with an undercurrent of eagerness, unexpected fantasies of emergence and interspecies metamorphosis. These unlikely combinations and unexpected emergences, O'Reilly mentions, which are about the creative undoing all subjective forms, I argue reson resonate strongly with the unnatural participations between the human and the animal that Belos and Bottery describe as integral to the production of becoming animal. The idea of becoming animal corresponds to the creation of creative alliances or contact zones that perforate the boundaries separating men from animals, different species, and their environments. It is delineated in Kafka as a unique method that replaces subjectivity, or in Thousand Playfuls as processes which uproot, from, uproot one from humanity if only for an instant. In meeting the animal, according to Deleuze and Guattari, the human subject enters into his or her own becoming animal. Taking becoming animal as a conceptual departure, I'd like to suggest that the performance, during which O'Reilly holds caresses and momentarily intertwines with the body of the pig, stages an interspecies alliance of becoming pig that might undo and transform the experience of human self, if only for an instant. In a further statement on her lab experience, which constitutes the background of her performative piece, O'Reilly explains, I quote, when I cut the pig, I have an urge to delve both hands into the belly to melt into her warm flesh, my blood to her blood, for a moment at the same temperature before one lowers the rhythmic. The artist's descriptions of her desire to melt with the pig in the lab and how she's left with an undercurrent of pigginess, I argue, foreground a sense of kinship with the feral other, a passage of effect between the human and the pig. It seems that through the biomedical processes, O'Reilly is oddly drawn into the animal on an effective level by developing a capacity to be open to the flows of pig effects. This opening of her human self into the pig effects in the laboratory setting in turn is strongly echoed in this, this visceral performance during which the artist stages an effective opening to, the other, to another form of life. When O'Reilly is dancing with the pig, her body enters into a composition with that of the pigs. Their layers of flesh become quite extensive letting her pass into a state of animality, which in the Lux and Gautori's work works, bears witness to an inhumanity immediately experienced in the body as such. In her performative encounter with the soul, O'Reilly fleetingly becomes other than human or embody more than the unity of her embodies or of her personal self. Through her performative actions and gestural devices with the animal, O'Reilly in fact performs her own becoming animal, a becoming pig, whereby she is momentarily put into contact these becomings, animal becomings, however, as Deleuze and Bacteria detail, are processes which generate mutual changes insofar as they affect the animal, no less than the human. In other words, the notion of becoming does not entail a one-sided transformation that is reserved for the human, rather it involves a reciprocal movement that has effect on both parties, as the authors go on to detail. detail. It's always double that which one becomes, becomes no less than the one that becomes. Given this two-way direct
which not inherit with such becomings, both animal and human other, become other than what they are. If we transpose this discussion to Riley's performance, the artist, as a living human being who has the capacity to affect and being affected, is surely undergoing a transformation that passes alongside animal. But what kind of reciprocity is it established between human and non-human when her partner in the piece is a dead animal? Due to the in inanimate status of the animal collaborator in the performance, one might say that it would not be able to act as an active participant, so the performance falls short in generating mutual exchanges and interchange interactions. Hence, it might seem at first, the performance is able to produce merely one-sided effects for a human being, instead of reciprocal activity constituted an animal being. Yet, I will go on to argue the reciprocity between the piece is achieved through the creation of identity bearing in between passages between the human and the animal through what I call human-animal proximities and zones of sense that are common to both. Others in what are the poor and dismissive all, relation, all, all relations that function by representation, mimesis and analogy state that becoming animal paints the interaction between the involved parties more as a passage rather than mimicry by which they are both carrying into a zone of proximity, an area of coexistence, I'm quoting, that makes it impossible to say where the boundary between the human and the animal lies. Within such zones, there is only a mutating trajectory between the two, I'm quoting, the becoming is neither one nor two, nor the relation of the two, it's the in-between. Becoming constitutes a zone of proximity and indiscernibility. From this perspective, the function of the animal in the becoming is to create a space for possibilities which suddenly sweeps up, sweeps us up and makes us become a proximity and undiscernibility that extracts the shared element from the animal far more effectively than any imitation could. Hence, the decisive insight of animal becomings is that they don't proceed by imitation but rather bringing both human and animal transiently in a zone of proximity or of transit. An in-between area that introduces a state of confusion between the two. These zones of transit, in turn, create a nebulous and shifting ontological ground in the middle of clear and sharply distinguished human and animal states, a realm of qualitative transformation in which their territories pass and slide into each other. The vocabularies of proximity and indiscernibility away from a logic of imitation For understanding how Riley's performance facilitates the reciprocal becoming for both sides of the human and animal participants, one living, one dead. Whether or not they are done for the sake of becoming, the artist's performative actions are not about pretending to be pig like or attempting to attain a similar form with the animal. The alliance formed between the pig and the human goes beyond the process of bare imitation to forge another kind of relationship, which is less preconceived and more subtle than that. The way uh, Riley momentarily positions the, the two bodies in space, her nude figure beside the body of the dead pig, allows an interrogation of the clarity of both identities by highlighting certain associations among them. The pink color of their skin, their shape, the shared size and silhouette of their bodies, as well as the texture of their flesh, complicate any perceptual differentiation between the pig flesh and the human flesh. These shared textures and mutually constitutive surfaces make it increasingly difficult to the figures in their visual preciseness and create a fuzzy interrelatedness that is suggested in a basic state common to both animals. The nature of the relationship here, therefore, has less to do with resemblance or analogy and more with a morphological continuity or commonality, which, according to Lewis and Battery, carries along the set of one qualitative state to another like the pure ceaseless becoming which passes through these states. This ontological continuum and shared corporate presence, sweeping up the distinct identities and visual sharpness of the human and non-human participants, allows something to pass between them. It is precisely why this passage, a becoming that other materializes here, a becoming that occurs not through imitational likeness, but through a common, intermediary, uncertain and ambivalent state. This space seems, in fact, very close to the ground that those in Vatari say, including, can dissolve forms and impose the existence of a zone in which we no longer know which is animal and which is human, because something like the triumph or monument of their non-distinction rises up. Uh,
to the extent that form, structure, and meaning related to their individual identities fully collapse. This leaves the audience with a transitory image of an interspecies life form, the upper part of the pig, lower part of the human, in which established dichotomies between self and other can no longer be sustained. O'Reilly spends quite some time lying inside the carcass of the pig, oscillating uncomfortably between human and animal states and creating a highly perplexing, ambiguous imagery that violates the familiar categories of perception. Watching this uneasy alliance begin to emerge in, the, in front of their very eyes, the audience for a brief moment may forget what species this figure belongs to. In fact, as a momentary mixture of living and dead creatures, this uneasy, this uneasy figure crosses the borders between the animate and inanimate as much as it crosses the boundaries of human and non-human. Cohabiting this unfigurable flesh and mass, O'Reilly and the soul clearly remain in a temporal state of change into something beyond their own species without any racial form or orderly, orderly structure, in short, without subjectivity. This amorphous entity in between species, then, becomes an embodiment of a quality of metamorphosis, suggests not an ontology of being, rather of becoming. Neither entirely pig nor quite human, the two participants exist in a duration interval, fleeting passage or a space of intermezzo between those identities. This is a becoming pig of the human as much as it's a becoming human of the pig. This transitory moments of interpenetration which render O'Reilly's as well as the body's pig, pig, pig's body, ontolo pig's body ontologically inexact and uncertain, meld them both into zones of indetermination and proximity in which woman and animal, animal and man have become indiscernible. One can already begin to understand why a reading of the performance as a comprising a simple hybridized state or a centaur-like hybrid entity might in fact be limited, impoverished, or simply clothed. While O'Reilly's relational dance does open up a composite and heterogeneous body dimension due to the, due to the interpretation inter of human and animal flesh, a closer look at the experiential nature of the performance reveals that her body and that of the pig are actively combined in a zone of transit, whereby they both remain as processual figures, always on their way to becoming something else. These transitional zones, which momentarily blend together the two partners, display a temporality, a dynamic passage between them. This blending state of indeterminacy, therefore, not only creates a composite discontinuous quantified body of space, but also a trans-individual continuous and qualitatively transforming one in the middle. Two Hence, I would, two? Two. Hence, I would like to suggest the work's critical power comes from these qualitative changing transitory and turbulent zones that entail the recognition of something shared or something indiscernible between these two ontological orders. This aesthetic zone of human-animal proximity between the soul and the man in turn has the potential to offer a neutral ground where their foundational biological differences are de-emphasized. Taking this physical level of relatedness with the animal as a starting point, I would like to finally consider the ways in which underground placeness might provide opportunities to reflect on the hierarchical nature of relationships humans have with their non-human others, particularly with respect to the institutionalized practice of using animals in scientific labs. As said earlier, O'Reilly's piece has its origins in the artist's training experience in an animal research facility, hence emerged partly as a response to animal testing, addressing the complex issues surrounding the expectative relationships human form with their animals, with animals, especially pigs. The frequent consumption and usage of pigs in contemporary medicine and genetics research, as well as in the food industry, continue to be a key issue. Living organisms, pigs in particular, are widely being fed for their body parts now and utilized as organ donors for humans in medical research. Within the context of modern science and technology, the domesticated pig is largely degraded to a state of object whose mere function is to yield to human needs. The issue then becomes how to move towards a new form of relationship with this animal within this unbalanced hierarchy, towards a more equal one. The tender, affectionate, and mournful dance O'Reilly performs with the carcass of the pig, 
which was freshly killed for food consumption, is significant in that respect. The way she treats the dead body of the pig with deep care and reverence for the duration of the performance seems to make a statement of these issues in a highly confronting manner on how these animals are routinely being sacrificed for scientific experimentation on meat production. Performed a short while after the artist's return to UK from semiotic laboratories, in the wrong place this seems to do with the mourning and grieving of the loss of an animal in, in the lab, the slaughter of the pig during her cell culture training. Uh, finally, uh, by, uh, by incorporating biotechnological practices and issues surrounding them into her body-oriented work, O'Reilly, in fact, might be exposing the hierarchy-producing mechanisms of, of those very processes and suggesting a critical approach to ponder over the human's domination of animals, which usually remain hidden in laboratories and slaughterhouses. The close physical proximity of the human with the soul in the form of morphologically indiscernible zones is a viable starting point to challenge this domination. This unspecified but common ground achieved during the performance could be understood as a challenge towards the idea of human exceptionalism as well as the long-held binary distinctions that posit animals as ontologically separate and le lesser beings. From this perspective in Wrighty's performance, the idea that pigs are physical substitutes for human beings in the lab appears to be transposed into the understanding that they are rather equal to us. Having created an ontastic continuity between her own and the pig's body in the form of zones of transit, O'Reilly's piece seems to subtly suggest that humans and pigs are actually equivalent beings and in the process question the validity of humanist assumptions that place men distinct and above from other living kingdoms. Finally, I would like to suggest that temporary the temporary coexistence of human and pig flesh, which tends towards a certain indiscernibility coming to, both, coming, coming to both, might suggest the possibility of an escape, if only for an instant, from the confines of the modern institutional spaces, laboratories and slaughterhouses that continue to promote hierarchies and inequality, inequalities and against animals. As a result, O'Reilly's piece must be, might be giving an awareness of an alternative and more molecular logic that asserts the need for a more respectful and equi equitable mode of affiliation with the members of other species. Thank you. Many thanks. If there is any questions, there is a few minutes for that. Or comments. Continuum exists only in, in, in the duration of the hour. Yes. Yeah, yes, definitely. But yeah. that was the main argument. It mm -hmm. challenges this discontinuity of equality for an instant. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you think this artwork has political consequences? In a subtle way. I mean, the, the, the artist, she, she, she doesn't have this political uh, kind of attitude towards her work. Of performance, but I think in a subtly political manner, it, it challenges these discontinuities and um, hierarchical relationships within the duration of the performance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. I, I'm surprised by that response because it seems to me that there was a political agenda in the piece uh, that she is challenging the, the notion of first. Being, uh, the pig being inferior uh -huh. uh, and, and maybe the uh, hierarchy in, in terms of the use of pigs for, uh, as objects for human exploitation. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, in that sense, uh, it could be seen as a political performance. Yeah, I'm just following the, uh, 